<laughs> I'm at the markets again today. I wonder what I'll find. It's a busy day today. These are interesting pots. Two for fifteen. Never mind. Since I was looking for fillers, I got a couple of tubes of Aurora and another sedum which I can't remember the name of. And these are the new sedums that I brought home. I've got a couple of tubes of the Aurora. And these are the pale the pale type of jelly beans. If you would compare them to the regular jelly beans, it would be it would have much less coloring. It has less chlorophyll. And that explains the paleness. I'm not sure what this one is, but I'm pretty sure that this is a hybrid of the Pachyphylum or the blue jelly beans. In time, I'll find out the ID. The reason I got this is because I, I'm thinking of using the Aurora and the regular jelly beans as fillers in the, in the arc. This has a few heads, so I, I will be likely chopping it up and have consistent sizes. Today I'm working on consolidating my fillers and to do that I'll be harvesting some of the clump plants here. I'm thinking of removing all of the glocas here and replace them with elegance. That way I remain consistency with the rest of the design. I'll be using some of them to fill up the gaps here. But as you can see, most of them have their own pups. So I, I might as well harvest some of them here, use them to fill some of the gaps and see what excess I end up with and I might use them in the arc. So now I have a tub full of gloca and I'm going to spread them around in the garden. But before I do that, there's some cleaning up that I have to do. So as you can see, there's a lot of dry leaves and I don't really like the look of those. <laughs>
now that I've cleaned them up, well, mostly, I can move them over to this spot. I'm going to use them to fill up the gaps. And most of the plants here already have lots of pops, so I think it would be a really easy task to do. I could even choose to, to pluck the pops from them and use them to fill up the gaps that won't be covered by this ones. I'm done planting in the glocas that I picked up from the other side and I think I've sufficiently filled up the gaps in this pot. There are still some small gaps around but that's easily fixed if I harvest the pops on the clumps here and just spread them around. I think I'll do that on another day. Having finished working on the Glocas team, it's time for me to harvest some elegance so I can use them to fill up the gap that I created where I pulled out the Glocka pops just now. I have a couple of clumps here, so one is here and the other is at the other side. And both clumps have lots of pops. Surely I would have enough material, I think. And we'll see. I'll go ahead and pluck some of them.
and look I managed to fill half of this container with elegance like what I always do I'm going to trim up, trim the stems and remove some of the lower leaves that way it would be easier to set them in the landscape Now I'm done preparing my elegance. As you can see in this tub, I have three piles. This pile contains the cuttings, the rosette heads. This pile are all of the leaves that I removed from the stem. And these are the stems that have roots and I think I could still grow pops off of them. This is going to be one hell of a propagation. Having done all of my elegance, I think I can now plant them in. The last time I watered was yesterday but I've been checking the soil and it doesn't seem to be too wet so it's just right, just a bit moist. I think it would be safe to plant them in now. I just have to make sure that I don't water them anytime soon. I would need to give them at least a day before I give them any soaking. The elegants are in now and I've used them to create a carpet of pale blue around the plants here. So this complements the other side because I've used elegance to line around the bowls. Now they no longer look out of place. It seems like I just got enough pops to fill up this space. And that means that any other pops I get in the future would be going to the ark. There are still lots of pups that I could harvest around here. They're still a bit tiny, but since it's summer, they would be growing really fast. There's also more in the clumps by the older arc. So once they grow a bit bigger and push out, I'll be able to harvest them. That way I would have more plant material to work with. Another thing in my agenda for today is to remove this Echeveria Bluette. I've got two of these. So this is one here 
and the other one is over here and it's much larger I intend to sell off this one and I've already got a friend who's interested in it I need to replace it with something else and I've been looking at my freelies and I found this this is an Echeveria Easter bonnet and you can see that the leaves are already starting to frill to curl so I think it would be a good replacement for this the only thing I'm concerned about is they might be of different sizes so as you can see this bluette here is tiny and this one might grow quite fast so it might be out of place compared to this other rosettes because they have been growing a bit slowly but in the short term I think it's a good idea to replace it now By having the bluette replaced by the Easter bonnet, I think I'm almost done with my unfinished business. Although there's one more left in the list, and that's cleaning up the imbricatas. As you can see, the imbricatas are flowering up right now. And personally, I find the flowers too messy. And since I have a lot of imbricatas lining up the landscape, it looks chaotic, man. So what I'm going to do is to chop off the flower stalks on the imbricata. That way things would be looking more orderly again. I think you'll agree with me when I say that this looks much neater than before. And these are all the flower stalks that I got from all of those imbricata. And there's one last thing. This imbricata has rotted out over the last few weeks. As you can see, there's a darkening of the stem, so there's no saving it now. I'm going to separate the pups and see if they can still be saved. It's just the parent plant that seems to be doing bad. So I'm going to pull it out. As you can see, the leaves readily fall off because the leaf node or the edges where they used to connect to the stem they have already rotted. So there's not there's not much connecting them anymore. With most of the leaves out of the way, it would be easier for me to pull it out. Boy, this is such a huge stem. Okay. 
this bit is collapsing because it has already rotted through and through but the pups seem to be doing great I'm going to separate them because they could still be saved What I find funny though is that although one side of the stem has already rotten, the other side where it's still green and healthy, you could see lots of offsets growing. I wonder if I should just, you know, maybe let it be, see if they still grow. So I wouldn't want to waste those. When I find the time, on some other day, I'm going to probably move this one a bit to the left just so it balances out in terms of distance and space that way it would appear in the center of this gap here for now I'm going to leave this exposed because that way it would uh, the soil would fry under the sun I've already sprayed some antifungal solution a few days ago so it is systemic so I'm pretty sure the imbricata has, is already covered but yeah, for now, I'm just going to let that soil bake, bake under the sun. Maybe after a few days or maybe a week, I'm going to shift this one to the left. As for all of these flower stalks, I'm thinking of placing them inside this pot because I don't have a vase. Because they are still flowers after all. They might look nice as a bunch. And here they are now, inside a small pot. I managed to cram all of them in it. I also added a bit of soil. That way I can water them and they would grow roots and they would stay alive longer. So I set out to work on some unfinished business before I continue working on the ark. And I think I'm about done with them. From here, all I would be thinking about, at least for the most part, would be harvesting the plants that I would be using as my materials for the ark. I would also have to think about the arrangement and the layout in the ark. So far I have a very rough idea of what I want to do. I think once everything starts to come together, it would be, you know, things would just fall into place. It would be easier to decide what to do next once I can see it with my own eyes. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't yet. You could also follow me at my socials, that's Seriscapades at Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. As I mentioned earlier, in the next episodes, I would be continuing work on the Ark, finally, I think. I'll be continuing where I left off, and the last time I worked on the Ark, it was mainly staging. So as you can see, I only have some, I have a few plants here. I've laid down three pots in the middle. I would be removing these plants from the pots, and I'm going to lay them somewhere in the middle. Around them would be a bunch of other smaller plants, and they would be lining up the area. I would be using them to create patterns, so it, it is important that I would be using the clumping variety. I've already considered using the Glocka, the Senecio Serpents, or the Dwarf Blue Chalk Six, as well as the Elegance. I'm also thinking of using the Jelly Beans, the green and the pink variety. Once I have the materials ready, it would be easy to work on the tapestry. All I have to do is to just plug them in. I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.